would your life be different if you were able to pay down your mortgage in seven years or less using banks' money without changing your spending habits? And how would your life be different if you had access 24-7 to funds made available to you whenever you needed them, as an example, to purchase a piece of real estate when a good deal came along? How would your life be different if you were able to consolidate your credit cards and your credit debt and your loans and pay them off on a very accelerated basis, saving you thousands of dollars of interest? How would your life be different? Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to open it up on the inside and I'm going to share with you one of the most powerful investment, real estate investment tools I've ever come across. My name is Gary Masseri and I'm the founder of Make Money Now Real Estate Investors. And I'm going to see you on the inside. Hey, welcome to the other side. Let's talk about velocity banking and why as a tool real estate investors just cling to it. Why is it so powerful? I call it the fifth pillar of wealth creation and here's why. Velocity banking is all about a person being able to pay off their mortgage on an accelerated basis. Most of the time that's seven years or less. Velocity banking is also all about investing in real estate or a rainy day fund. And Velocity Banking is nothing more than a line of credit. And when, But when you use that line of credit along with your checking account, it becomes a very powerful tool. And you're able to capture the money that, that the banks are using that you leave on deposit, that they loan out and make millions of dollars on. We put that money to work for you. So stick around. It may be a little complicated, but we're going to get clarity to this and give you understanding the power of leveraging a credit line called Velocity Banking. Here, here we go. By using a personal line of credit or a home equity line of credit, the borrower can accelerate the payoff of their home mortgage or any other debt that they choose. Now I'm going to read this to you and I'm going to make comments along the way. So this is done by combining a normal checking account with a line of credit into one account. Let's look at the definition of an amortized loan. An amortized loan is a loan where the principal of the loan is paid down over the life of the loan. That is amortized according to the amortization schedule, typically through equal payments. Each payment to the lender will consist of a portion of interest and a portion of principal. You do not have access to an amortized loan. An amortized loan simply pays your mortgage over an amortized period of time, which usually is about 30 years. Now let's look at the definition of a credit line. A credit line is an agreement to lend money up to a specific amount in the credit limit for a stated period. Some credit unions allow you, as long as you don't violate, you're in good standing, okay, their account forever. But unlike a loan, the borrower can decide how much of the agreed funding, if any, they wish to draw down. Interest is only paid on the amount that is actually borrowed, not on the amount that's made available. And this is what makes a credit line so powerful. As an example, you can have a $100,000 line and only draw down $20,000. You only pay interest on that $20,000. What makes a credit line much better than an amortized loan? You have access to the funds at will. Keep that in mind, access to the funds at will. Well, let's look at the major difference here. Credit line gives the borrower access okay, at will for any purpose, for any reason. Emergencies, what if you need car repairs or, or dental work or something always is coming up, you know that. And let's look at, how about paying off credit debt and getting that out of your hair? Okay, what about maybe making a car or a boat purchase or even going on vacation? We use it for purchasing of rental properties and we're gonna get more into that a little later. Okay, an advertised loan does not allow access to the borrowed well, it's very simple. One allows you access, the other doesn't. You know folks, there are trillions of dollars of equity into homes that people cannot access. And it's a shame because when they lose their jobs, okay, and they can't make their payments, sometimes they're even foreclosed on or, okay, they have to put their home on the market and sell it with equity. We see it all the time. So to understand the power of having access to funds when you want it, very, very powerful, okay? All right, so what is velocity banking? When the borrower makes deposits with their line of credit, the credit line records this as a payment against their loan. That's right. You no longer make payments. Your deposits become your payment. That's the main thing, and it's very hard sometimes for people to understand that. Okay, when the borrower withdraws money from their credit line, it's recorded as a loan and the interest is charged to that account. In other words, when you start drawing from that line of credit, what happens is they're going to charge your account and you're going to pay interest for it because it's basically a loan. Okay? 
The borrowers only charge for the use of the funds as they need it. That's what's the cool thing. It's sitting there waiting for you. Okay, it's always there for you. That's better than a credit card that charges you 31% interest. Keep that in mind. When the borrower makes a deposit, those funds sit in their LLC account, reducing the loan amount until the use of those funds to pay bills or make investments. In other words, that money is sitting there in your LLC account. What's different if it's in a bank account? The banks have use of that in an LLC account. We're going to show you how you're going to put that money to work, reducing your debt and saving you thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars of interest costs. Meantime, the money is working for them, saving them interest cost when it's in an LLC. Okay. History of the mortgage acceleration. Velocity banking is not new. In fact, in Australia, did you know that 50% of the homeowners own their homes outright with no mortgage debt? And do you realize that the average family in Australia makes less money than what they do in America? So how can that be? The wealthiest country in the world and most of our American families do not own their homes outright. And, and here's a country that has lower incomes and they do. Why is that? This is also known as a mortgage acceleration, right? Now let's look at this. Very few people in America own their homes outright with no mortgage debt because the Americans have been taught to focus on their monthly payments, not the cost of the loan. So everybody looks at what's it gonna cost me? And they fight like crazy to refinance their homes to save a quarter on their interest rate to get their payments down by 100 to $200. Okay, this is what I call the American craze. Own a home, get your payments down. All right, now let's go back to the history and really look at what happened and why this is so and why the Americans think this way. In 1949, the rise of the mortgage market began with long-term amortization, making home ownership affordable. I remember prior to that time, you know, the banks were making loans to farmers and their homes, but never with an amortization schedule scheduled over 30 years. So let's look at what happened. Home ownership shot up from 20% to 70% in America. The first year that this came out, amazing. Okay, did it work? Absolutely. Was the government wrong? No. What went wrong then? Big banks, friends. Here's what happened. Greed. Big banks saw it as money, cow, as millions of dollars of interest poured in. 95% of your payment in the first five years goes to interest. As interest rates would drop, people started to refinance for lower payments. They were always payment conscious and never debt-free conscious or paying their mortgage off. As more borrowers purchased homes, the payments to the banks increased and they had more money to loan. The banks went crazy loaning money to everyone, qualified or not. Because I own several mortgage companies. In fact, one of them, I own 58 branches and 1,200 loan officers, and I can tell you then I'm not going to name the name of the banks, but the fraud that was going on before 207 to 208 when the bubble popped was amazing. If I told you that real banks did fraudulent W-2s and 1099s, I am not lying to you and I am not joking. It was that bad. People were getting loans that weren't even working. Okay, so The banks went crazy loaning money to everyone, qualified or not. To protect depositors from the banks, the Fed stepped in and required a 25% reserve on all the deposits or payments that they took in. They call them deposits. All right. So the so if you went to the bank, you can you can withdraw your money instead of the money being loaned to somebody else. They had to put they had to put a cap on it. It got so bad. All right. So the jobs grew. People started moving up to bigger homes. Remember, coming out of World War II in the 40s and the 50s, okay, people started to you know we had a pretty good economy then. Okay, and people started buying homes. The average American family would refinance or move five to seven times in their lifetime. The average life of a loan today is only seven years. Think about this for a minute. The clock starts again. You refinance or buy another home, all of a sudden you got 30 years to pay it off. Five years later, you refinance again, you got another 30 years to pay it off because you're re-advertising the balance that you paid down in that five year period of time over another 30 years to keep those payments down. Wrong. Dumb, stupid, I'm sorry. We got trapped. We got educated to be in a will where we never owned our own homes. The bank owns our homes. With the advent of the amortized loan, the banks would collect 95% of the payment as interest for the first five years. And did you realize that over the 50% or 15 years into the loan, 50% of the life of the loan, that the, that the interest that's charged you is more than the principal that you borrowed? 
That's how fat the banks are. Now think about this. How about how about 30% interest rates right now? That's what's going on out there. They start you at 15, 16, and they work you up to 30. With families refinancing or buying a new home every five to seven years, the banks collected a whirlwind of money. Home ownership became such a craze that people didn't care about loan cost. Paying off a mortgage was never even considered. It was all about the payment. Now, let's look at the cost of money because something else happened in that time frame. It started in the 60s and it started to grow rapidly in the 70s and through the 80s and even to now. Loan fees started skyrocketing and soon people were paying upfront fees to acquire these loans. The mortgage brokerage came into existence. The variable loans came into existence. What happened here? Folks, the junk fees that you pay for loans today are ridiculous. And the title fees that you pay are ridiculous. Okay, the government stepped in and required banks to disclose these junk fees by producing an APR, what we call an annual percentage rate. Now let's look at the cost of your loan. It's the cost of the loan plus interest cost in the loan. So there's a difference between your note rate and your actual cost of the loan, what we call an effective rate sometimes. In this example, a $250,000 mortgage loan, a 4% note rate would cost $179,673 of interest over the life of the loan. That's a lot of money, folks. Okay, now that's, that's crazy. Now look at this. Now add the junk fees of 7,500, usually two to 3%, making the loan cost $187,173. Now your APR is four and a quarter percent. Your note rate's four percent. That's an increase of a quarter percent. I've seen junk fees even add up to a half a point on the loan. So your effective rate is really four and a quarter. So be careful, those junk fees are powerful. So two things happen. The banks are pulling it in, loaning it out, and all of a sudden they started adding junk fees to your loans to collect even more money. To compete with big banks, the credit union stepped into the market offering LOC, a personal line of credit, and also what we call a HELOC, a home equity lines of credit. Now, why do the credit unions do that? The credit unions did not charge large upfront fees. This gave the credit union the borrower a huge advantage over the bank. So let me answer the question. Why did the credit unions come out with credit lines to compete with the bank? Because they wanted to attract more deposits to their industry. And they had to compete with the big banks. So they did away with the charges. They started offering credit lines. I'm telling you, the credit lines are going to be the future of advertised loans. In other words, advertised loans are gonna go away. Homes are gonna be bought on credit lines. You watch, it's gonna happen, okay? I gave you a little forecast there. Access to funds anytime the borrower needs it. What are the advantages? Lower payments are required. Lower interest cost. Lower effective rate. More buying power. Faster debt to pay off and it has access where a home loan doesn't. Let's review how interest is computed using a credit line. It's a very, it's a simple interest formula, it's not a compound formula. It's interest equals principal times rate times time. So only charge for the amount of time that you use it. Example, borrow $100,000 at a 4% rate over five years, what would it cost you? Well, $100,000 times 0 0.04 times five years is $20,000 of interest cost. Keep that in your mind now, okay? If you borrowed $100,000, you didn't pay anything back, okay, you would pay $20,000 over five years for that line, okay? Now, watch what happens here. Let's look at the same $100,000 loan amortized over 30 years, but borrowed for only five years. The interest cost is $19,000.92. The junk fees are $3,000. The total cost is 22092 And here's a loan that's reducing in principle slightly, but it still costs more to do this loan than it does an interest-only loan with, with the same interest rates. Isn't that interesting? Now, the principal reduction here is only 9552 After five years of payments, that's all you paid down? You still owe $90,000 on that loan? So after five years of using a credit line, making $20,000 extra principal payments, annually your mortgage is paid off. I know what you're thinking, where am I gonna get $20,000? Well, this is the big secret I'm gonna share with you today. How cool is that? Okay, I'm gonna show you where you can get that $20,000. It's gonna shock you. You already have it and you don't even know it. Saving the borrower thousands of dollars of needless interest cost from the banks. Okay, let's look at it. With a home loan over five years making payments, you reduced your loan a measly 
$9,552, still owing $90,000. How sick is that? This occurs because the interest is loaded at 95% of the payments. Okay, 95% of your payment is interest. Only 5% goes towards principal. Because why? It's assuming that you're going to carry that loan over 30 years to pay it off. Does anybody do that? No. Okay, this is where the bank's got you. Other words, the borrower is paying interest for the use of the funds over 30 years. Even though the average borrower only holds the loan for what? Five to seven years. Big banks collect high interest as borrowers do this over and over and over again. They never even think about paying off their loan. All they think about is lower payments, lower payments, refinance, refinance, refinance. Credit line charges, okay, credit line only charges for use of funds over the time the borrower uses it. Okay, it doesn't charge them needless interest of funds they're not using over 30 years. I hope this is getting through. Does not charge for the available amount approved. There are no upfront fees, okay. Great question. How does the credit line get paid back? All right, I know you've been waiting. How do I, what do I do with that 20,000? Where do I get that $20,000 I borrowed from the credit line, okay? All right, by combining your new line of credit and checking account into one account, okay, your spread and daily average pays down the credit line. Well, what, okay, we're gonna explain that to you in a minute. So imagine your checking account is your line of credit account. The two accounts are now one account. This is the power of that. When I talked about spread, that's the difference between your deposits and your expenses, what's left over. And then we're gonna talk about your daily balance, how that's applied to your loan and reduces your interest costs. How cool is that? Did you know that your daily average in the bank account is your money that's being used by the banks and you're not and they're not paying you for it, but they're making a fortune on it. Hello? Your money is not working for you. It's working for the banks and it's your money. So look what happens. Your money goes in, you make your deposits. Now this is, these are deposits that are sitting in your bank account until you pay your bills. Now the bank has use of this money and you don't and it's your money. The banks do not want you to know what I'm teaching you right now, okay? I'm serious, they do not. As your money sits in your LLC, it's reducing your LLC balance and your interest costs. So we're gonna take that money away from the banks and we're gonna put it into your new LLC combined account and put it to work for you. All right, so where's the 20,000 come from? I know you keep on asking me that. Well, we're, gonna, we're getting there. Let's look at this checking account, normal checking account here. I want you to notice two things. I want you to go all the way to the right and look at the daily average right here. Look at that daily average. All that is, is your balance divided by 30 days. 166, 193, 83, 250, 183, 50. That money is working for the banks and it's your money. I hope you get this. Now look at the balance at the bottom here. At the end of the month, you put in your deposit, you paid your bills and you had $1,500 left over. Sitting in your account. You know it's sitting in your account because you don't know what. You don't want any non-sufficient fund charges. Okay? And then the bank charges you junk fees now for what? For online usage, withdrawing at ATMs. Oh my gosh, they got us coming and going. All right now, look what happens with a credit line account. Now, this is a credit line account that's not attached to a bank account. Okay? Just a regular line of credit somebody gets, but it's not attached to a checking account with checks and debit cards. So the funds are available 100, you come in and you make your mortgage payment of 20,000, transfer it over to your bank account. That's one way to do it, but it's not as effective as combining the accounts. So keep that in mind, because you're not taking advantage of the daily average and daily average balance that you have on your account. Yeah, you're still letting the banks use it. Now you purchase a rental property for 35,000, your funds, available funds reduced and your loans borrowed are 55 and you start paying interest on the 55. The dental pill comes on unexpectedly, boom, you withdraw that from your line of credit instead of charging it on your credit card at 16 to 30%, which is smart. Okay, the funds are available, reduces that and it increases the funds borrowed. Now you make your, your little loan payment or your interest charge off your credit line for borrowing that money, 200 to 500 bucks, somewhere around there. Okay, so now your funds available are 42.8 and you know, your funds borrowed are 52, I'm sorry, 57.2. Now again, this is, this is the transactions in, in and out of a credit line. Now let's combine the two accounts and see what happens. This is the magic, folks. This is where it happens. Your credit line is paid based on your deposits minus your expenses. That's your spread. 
and your daily balance kicks in. In this example, you have 18,000, 20,000 a year being repaid in your line just by combining the two accounts and not changing your spending habits. How cool is that? So let's look at this. You got, let's look at it. Let's start with funds available, 100,000. Okay, you pull down your 20,000 principal payment you make every year to your mortgage to pay off your, your mortgage or whatever mortgage you want to pay off. And you can use more or less. This is an example. Funds available, 80,000. Funds borrowed, 20. You're paying interest to that account on, on the, you know, on the 20,000. No question about that. You buy a piece of property for $35,000. Okay, we got that. And then guess what happens? You make a deposit into your checking account because now it's your checking and it is also your LOC account combined. That is your payment. How cool is that? Okay. Now, you're still going to make your normal house payments. That's not going to go away right? Your bills and your LLC are being paid out of your LLC account and any investments that you make, right? And you go ahead and make another deposit. Now think about this for a minute. How is your, how is your combined account going to work when you start buying rental properties and you start, think about this for a minute, flowing the cash flow of those rental properties into your combined account, okay? This is your business account. This is what's going to happen. You're going to accelerate the payoff of all those mortgage loans. So it's very, very, very powerful. Remember, every year, 20000 comes out of the account, goes against your loan. It could be 30, it could be 40, it could be 50. Okay, that's how it works. And as you put money in and you take money out, what's left over now is applied to your loan balance. And your daily averages are applied to your loan balance. Okay, very cool deal, isn't it? automatically done. So how does it work? By combining the checking account and your new line of credit, your deposits become your LLC payments. Your money is now reducing, right, your LLC and your mortgage debt, saving you thousands of dollars of interest. No change in your spending habits. You just automatically do everything you did before. But it's tied to that credit line. So the money goes in and out of your line. Your spread is the difference of the deposits less your withdrawal. In our example, the spread was $1,500 monthly. That's $18,000 a year, folks. That will be applied. Now, a lot of people spend that money. Okay, really, they do. And they wonder why it's not there. You all, Because why? Because an emergency comes up, you have to spend it. The car needs repairs. You need tires. Or you need, like in our family, the dental bills in the last couple of months been over $4,000. You also had a daily account average working for you instead of the, of the bank or credit units working for you and your account. All right, I hope you get this. Oh my gosh, I hope you get it. Both your spread and your daily average are reducing your LLC. How cool is that? Okay, the money you let hang around in your bank account is now working for you, not the banks. Average big bank balance, okay, here it is. Your money, while it's sitting in your bank account, is now working for you, reducing debt, okay? Let's say that your spread each month is $1,500. You would okay, reduce your credit line by $18,000 just on your spread, plus on the interest that you save. Because you, that remember, that money is reduced on your loan account because it's sitting in your LLC account. That's another two or $3,000 a year. How much was the $20,000 you made every year to pay, pay down your mortgage outside of your LLC? $20,000. Where did you get the money to pay down your LLC? From money that was sitting around, banks were using that you weren't even using. Folks, if you get this, man, you're on your way to create wealth, right? Plus your daily average, right? All right. So here's what happens. Your balance after five years on a home loan is $90,000, $448 versus a credit line balance of zero. Because what, what happened? Because you took that out, that $20,000 out of your credit line every year, you pay down your mortgage in five years, that $100,000 mortgage to zero, and then what happened after that? Well, guess what? Okay, you start, again, you start every year you rebuild in your credit line, that 20,000 that you took out to pay. So now you got it there next year to pay down. I promise you, your LLC balance will not change because you're doing this method. It regenerates, it regenerates, it regenerates. Hello? Okay, why does this work? Because it's simply automatic. If you were to manage this, it would never work. I've been doing these loans 
for over 20 years, had a top radio show, built wealth on that radio show, selling loans like this. And I'm telling you, I know the habits of people. When I sat down with them and I had them do it from a credit line to a checking account, it never worked. When I combined the two, it was automatic, it worked. The average family would spend this extra money or maybe save it in a low-bearing savings account. This is the problem. Each time you make a purchase using your credit line, you automatically start paying it off with your deposits and your daily averages. How cool is that? You have purchasing power now. As your line of credit reduces, the available funds increase. So once you pay off your mortgage, go buy another home and pay off another mortgage. Pay off four or five mortgages at a time by using your payments, your, your net cash flow from your real estate into your what? LLC account and checking account. I call that a power account. Start buying real estate and start flowing your net cash flow into your account. Look at this. Imagine your buying power with five rental properties flowing in a net cash, $1,500 a month. That's net after expenses. You add up five, that's $7,500 going against that. Okay, $7,500 a month, my friends. Are you see where I'm going with this? You're going to be transferring the power of that credit line into reducing the mortgage debt on one property to another property to another property. I'm telling you, in five to seven years, you can own properties somewhere around four to $500,000 debt free using this technique. Okay, I'll lay the strategies out for you. All right, purchasing power is very powerful. You are now paying down your mortgages while increasing your purchasing power. How cool is that? It allows you to do what? Additional purchases. See, the problem in the 207, 208 bubble pop, the reason the, the reason it hurt so many people is because they were using, you know, they were buying high leverage properties. In other words, the appraised value and the and the loan amount were about the same. Some of them even bought higher. They had more mortgage on it than the appraised value of the property. What I'm trying to tell you, if they would have kept a lousy 30% equity in that property, oh my God, or okay, that's all they needed. 30% equity, 70% debt. They could have outlived, I'm telling you, the big pop, the big bubble, the big short. They really could have, but they didn't. They didn't have even 30% equity to cover market volatility. This allows you to buy more real estate and own it debt free. Now think about what I'm teaching you. You're gonna buy real estate, Pay off the mortgage, own it debt free. Start with your own personal mortgage first. Let's invest in your future. This is just one of the many ways that we're gonna teach you about creating wealth and financial freedom. One of the greatest quotes, this is one of my personal quotes, the greatest investment one can make is in oneself. I'm gonna give you the other pillars right now. The first pillar, in, in as far as wealth creation goes, is to find somebody that's successful at real estate investing and let them mentor you. Seriously, mentorship is the first pillar of wealth. Secondly, it's education. Education is a pillar to wealth. Get educated, get smart. Don't take the risk. The third one is the community. The community is so powerful. And the fourth one is a credit line, velocity banking. Those are the four pillars of wealth. And then you got to add yourself in there, which is hard work. All right. So it's easy to find us. Contact the person. Contact the person who referred you and tell them, hey, I want to know more about Make Money Now, real estate investors. I want to learn from you guys. I want to create my wealth and start my pillars going and build my foundation. Okay. Google us for our meetup group in your area. How cool is that? It's right there. Fill out our questionnaire form right here. All right. This is Coach Gary. I wish you all the best. I think 2018 is going to be one of the most powerful years ever in real estate. I hope you come to our community. I hope you take our educational programs. I hope you let us mentor you. And I hope that you will create a legacy and be free financially by owning your own business in real estate. God bless.